Was it diplomatic of you to say that if it was left to you, uh, you know, you'd see Israel putting up the heads of the top 100 not that if it's left to me, if it's left to Israel and that's what they decide to do, yeah, I'm perfectly okay but with that. But this is your idea, yeah. was that they put the heads on stakes of the 100 top Hamas leaders. That's not diplomacy, is it? I mean, that's going to be literally a pouring a bucket of fuel onto a raging fire. Isn't I, it? I actually think that that might be far better, Pierce, as an alternative really? to a prolonged ground invasion with Gaza involving a bunch of civilians versus taking the top 100 leaders but isn't it just of a terrorist kind of, organization Vivek, isn't that are just, carrying out Vivek, a form of genocide. Isn't that the kind of medieval barbarism which they perpetrated on the people of Israel on October the 7th, which... I think there's one crucial the, difference. The civilized world yeah, should seek to be above, Pierce, shouldn't they? Pierce, there's, there's a real difference there, a fundamental difference. One is an armed militia doing mm. it against civilians mm. versus going after the perpetrators, and I specifically said the top 100 leaders of Hamas. And this is a fun conversation. It's interesting to me because I've actually just taken objections the other way, saying that that's far too limited in mm. scope, right? Just to say the top 100 leaders of Hamas, well, why wouldn't we expand the scope of who we hold responsible? So, yes, I do think that's diplomacy, But Barack Obama actually. never showed images of a dead Osama bin Laden. He didn't feel that would be the right thing to do. He felt that would be too inflammatory, is my understanding. Well, I'll so say the wider two things Muslim in response world. to that. That's Barack Obama is not my arbiter of what counts as good diplomacy or not. Mm -hmm. And second is each situation is different. I mean, each situation is different about asking what is in the American self-interest. So I'm not saying, on the Israel point, I was very clear in my speech when I brought this up. That is, I said it about three times, that is Israel's decision to make, not ours. And I think that that uh, provides a level of, yes, moral clarity about who the leader of a nation owes an obligation to. Mm -hmm. David Ben-Gurion had a vision for Israel. Self-sufficiency makes its own decisions for its own security. George Washington, in his farewell address in the United States of America, had a vision for this nation, the lead founding father of our nation, that we look to the interests of our citizens without foreign entanglements. And I think if we're honest about that, I actually think that that opens up greater possibility for peace everywhere because both our allies and our adversaries can actually trust what we say. Red lines will actually be red lines because if they're crossed, it means it really violates the national self-interest. One of the other candidates for President Ron DeSantis has said that the students who've been protesting across American campuses, um, very pro-Palestinian, a lot of Jewish students feeling very threatened by it. Some of these students actually beaming pro-Hamas imagery to the buildings at George Washington University and so on. That they should be taken out. Uh, if they have visas, they should be revoked and so on. You've said you don't believe in that because of free speech. But again, is there no limit to that free speech? If people are actively supporting and promoting a terror organization like Hamas, that's isn't that hate speech, not free speech? Well, to be clear, I am a ardent defender of the First Amendment. So I'm, I agree so, with you. So the First Amendment does not protect against incite, actual incitement to violence, to say, hey, go kill that guy right there, do it now, shoot him. That's not protecting speech. What about speech. saying Hamas but, is but great? So, so in the U.S., the jurisprudence on this, I mean, the U.S. Mm. is very clear. Anything that is an expression of an opinion is protected. So if you're expressing an opinion, however heinous, mm. that opinion is protected by the First Amendment. All opinions are protected. Now, my view is some of those are heinous opinions. We're the country, the United States of America, who said the Nazis could march in Skokie, Illinois. Many people around the world would disagree with that, but that's what makes America itself. I disagree vehemently with those Nazis, but I will defend to the death this country, in this country the right of anybody to express their opinion. You'll defend to the death the right of people to be Nazis in America. I write the right of people to express an opinion. Being a Nazi can involve more than that, right? If you're taking action based on that, no. Heck no. But if you want to... But if you're promoting and supporting a, a, a Nazi ideology, why would you want to accept that in America? I don't want to accept that. The way we defeat it... Why would you tolerate it? I don't tolerate it. We don't tolerate it through free, more speech. You defeat it in the marketplace of ideas, and we're not tolerating it. Because think about what you're doing to somebody who has that nasty opinion and then tell them that they have to keep it to themselves. You tell people they can't speak, they scream. But would you allow people to... If you tell to... people they can't scream, that's when they take physical okay, action. But so also, I don't want to see that. Would you be happy to see pro-Nazi No, marches? I'm not happy. Of course I'm not happy. If you're happy president of the United States, you would allow it to happen. 
Nazi marches. It, I, I'll tell you something deeper, Pierce. This is how it works in the United States. It's not even my power to decide whether to allow it to happen. The Constitution and the Supreme Court has already long held that the expression of heinous opinions is part of the American constitutional life. To say that the government, no government actor, should ever decide which opinions can and cannot be expressed. Let me read you a quote from Nikki Haley, one of your other uh, rivals to be president. She says, you want to go and defund Israel, you want to give Taiwan to China, you want to go and give Ukraine to Russia. Under your watch, you will make America less safe. Now, we've discussed Israel. You've clarified your position on Taiwan. And I think it's significant that you now said you would send in American troops to defend Taiwan should China try and attack it. I said we would militarily defend. You'd send troops in? Military, it depends on whether ground troops are actually what matter or not. You could talk about destroyers. You could talk about SSGNs. But you would send American approaches. military in to defend the Taiwanese? We, we would militarily defend Taiwan, yes, at least until we've mm. achieved semiconductor independence. I mean, that wasn't and what I'm you, the only candidate who it, said it. But this brings me neatly to Ukraine, yes. which was invaded and attacked. It's a, it's a sovereign democratic country. It was attacked. Democratic with an asterisk. No, no. Democratic. With an well, it had a massive majority voted for democracy. Well, much of the regions that are occupied haven't been represented in Ukrainians in Ukraine's parliament for nine years. Right. So, table stakes discussion there. But it is okay. You can call it asterisk democracy. I'll say democracy. But it was attacked and invaded by Russia. Uh, and you originally, when you first tweeted about it, you were quite censorious about what Russia had done, and pro-Ukraine. Your rhetoric I was changed. Pro-Ukraine, but I but I but I found it offensive. I mean, I've said this at every step. Mm. Putin is a craven dictator. Mm. Okay, Putin is absolutely a craven dictator. Is, he a, is he a war criminal? I don't know. I don't have enough information to suggest you he's don't a war know? criminal. The ICJ makes that judgment. Again, the U.S. the U.S. president. You don't think what he's done in Ukraine constitutes a war crime? Based on what we've seen, a lot of it looks likely to meet the ICJ's test. But I don't think the U.S. president. It, makes, it meets any test, doesn't well, it? Well, I think that a lot of people have committed war crimes then on that basis, mm -hmm. right? So you can't just selectively single him out. Well, illegally invading a sovereign country is, is, a, is, a, is a crime, isn't it? For us to get on the same page, is Putin an evil dictator? Yes, he is. Mm. Just because Putin is bad, does that mean Ukraine is good? No, it does not. Okay, this is a country that has banned 11 opposition parties. Mm. This is a country that has consolidated all of its media into one state TV media arm. This is a country that celebrated a Nazi in its own ranks in front of the Canadian Parliament, Zelensky did. This is a country that's effectively threatening the U.S. not to hold its elections unless the U.S. forks over more money. And also against the backdrop here, it's worth wondering why that initial incursion to Kyiv went nowhere, but Luhansk and Donetsk were easily captured without counter-resistance. Why? These are Russian-speaking regions. Many residents there don't even view themselves as part of Ukraine. They view themselves as part of Russia. And for the better part of the last decade, almost 10 years, they haven't even been represented in the Ukrainian parliament. Well, there are large so we ways. have to measure that against you give, You would give Putin what he's taken, right? I wouldn't give, I wouldn't give him anything. There's a deal. What would you give him? I wouldn't give him anything. I would okay. give him a deal. What's the deal he's going to take then? Well, here's the deal. He has to exit his military alliance with Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. End the Russia-China military alliance. That's the top threat that the U.S. What's faces. the deal with Ukraine territory? And then in return, what we get is a hard commitment that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO. In truth, that's just keeping... But what about the land he's well, taking? Well, this is the most important part, is the NATO hard... This is what matters most to Putin. Mm. There's other parts of this deal I can talk about on both sides. The mm. most important element of each, and then I can go to the second most. The most important element is Russia exit its military alliance with China. We make a hard commitment that NATO not admit Ukraine to NATO. Which, by the way, Piers, that violates... We've systematically violated a commitment we made back in 1990. James Baker, the U.S. Secretary of State, made a commitment okay, to Gorbachev. Okay, but tell me about, on this deal. And then, and then here we'd freeze the current lines of control. Wh what? Freeze the current you lines of control. You would give Putin everything he stole? I I would freeze the current lines of control. What do you mean? I mean what does that mean? These are Russian-speaking regions that are occupied today. You would literally give Putin what he's stolen? You, Only, would, give, you would give I'm a not, guy... You I'm just, not giving him anything. I'm you giving just him a deal. What did you describe him as to it's me again? It's conditioned. What did you call Putin? He's an evil dictator. You give an so evil Xi dictator... So are countless others. ...land he's stolen by killing people. You would give him the land. Pierce, I'm not going to give him anything. I'm giving him a deal. You just said you'd give him the whole... I'm south. not going to give him. That's your word, not mine. I'd give him a deal. What I would you'd do to. is... No, we would require Russia to exit its military alliance with China. What threatens the United States of America? What message are you the sending? The Russian-China right, military we've, we've, alliance. You're president of the United States, and you say, all right, uh, Vladimir, I know you invaded illegally a sovereign democratic country, and they fought for it's their freedom. It's not a democratic country. And they fought Ukraine for, is not a democratic country. And they fought for Ukraine their... Ukraine is not a democratic country. I don't agree with you. I mean... I don't agree with look you. Look at what they're doing to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church right now. Let me finish this, right let me finish this, this conversation. Just, it's just a myth, Let though, me finish... But we're having a mythological conversation. Well, you Ukraine don't think it is. Ukraine is not a democratic country. The people country. of Ukraine voted for democracy in massive majority Except numbers. for the ones that didn't vote that happened to be in the regions occupied by Russia. But you would give these 
this area that they've stolen back to the Russians, right? So you're telling... I would not. You're telling would every... Conditioned. You're telling every... I would not do anything on. other than we get what we want You're telling return. every evil dictator in the world, you can go and invade any country you like, take whatever land you can in a bloody war for as long as Here's you like... Here's what I find fascinating. And then eventually, I'll just give it how to much, you. How many hours of your show, or minutes, or seconds, have you dedicated to what Azerbaijan has done to mm. Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh on the different region on the other side of Caspian? Zero is probably the answer, just like every other me major member of the media. Why? Because Ukraine has been as successful in selling this Pied Piper myth in the United mm. States as Azerbaijan has. Yet what Azerbaijan just did in Nagorno-Karabakh over the same region, dating back to even September of this year, mm. pin drop silence. So if you're going to apply that standard, you would be applying it far more broadly. But applying your but standard as President of the United States seems my, quite... My standard is stay out of all. Because if you're in Ukraine for that reason, the United States would be in... 10 other conflicts right now. Mm. And so you're selectively applying it, if I may say, peers, not even to the best example you could make, because you know, Ukraine you know, is not a paragon of democracy. In old fashioned, but I remember in World War II when the Americans came in to help Britain finish when off the Nazis. When Pearl Harbor was hit. Yes. So I mean, it's, it, better, the, late the than, is, better late than never would be my response to that. Well, America but should look after self-interest. When America was attacked itself, then America did come into the war and did help Britain win it. And That's correct. When America thank, was hit, that happened. And thank God they did. And I, I'm grateful that America and Europe should be grateful that we did. And now NATO can spend maybe 2% of its GDP on military spending, which it's still failing to do. So much for gratitude. So I, but I, I On there, that point, I agree with you, and I agree with Donald Trump. And he, yeah. he did the right thing. When he said NATO was obsolete, he meant the way the finances are not being paid by a lot of the member countries. They're just not. A majority of them aren't.